Tim Brennan, the executive director of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, will retire in September after 40 years of dedicated service at the PVPC. Brennan has been instrumental in shaping policies in our region, ranging from transportation improvements to cleaning up the Connecticut River. I sat down recently with Brennan to talk about his long and distinguished career at the Planning Commission and the passion he brought to his work each and every day. It was an extraordinarily difficult decision because I love my work. Um, it's intoxicating to be able to, to work on projects that make a difference, uh, get people a job, get them to move on a different mode of transportation, clean up the Connecticut River. So leaving that behind and all the colleagues that you work with to get that work done was a wrenching decision, but um, I thought it was time to hand the baton off to another leader. Now, um, people watching this program will certainly recognize you. You've been on, on the television and in the news for many, many years. They're familiar with the agency, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, can you just again tell those folks basically what this agency is involved with. I think it's probably more expansive than many people uh, understand. What, what parameters do you have with this agency uh, in Western Massachusetts? The basic notion is that the problems and opportunities facing a geographic area are not local any longer and haven't been for decades and decades. And that in order to solve a problem, like cleaning up the Connecticut, or chasing an opportunity like connection to Boston with rail, you have to work together. And so our agency has a regional scope. And to your point, um, I never imagined this myself. We have an agenda that goes from A to Z. Um, and there are things that we're doing that are more traditional, housing planning, land use planning, transportation planning, but we're doing things like domestic violence prevention out in the rural communities or housing rehabilitation so that families that have a disabled person can move around the household safely and easily. So it's really exciting because you cannot possibly be bored in this position. Lots, uh, lots of moving parts, that's for sure. You've been with the agency now over 40 years. Tell us how you got involved in this kind of work in the first place, a little bit about your background and how you transitioned into your job. Well, I came here um, searching for grad school, and I sort of fell in love with the region almost instantaneously. I was fortunate enough to get into grad school at University of Massachusetts Amherst, got my degree, and then towards the end of the degree, um, they were encouraging, which is a smart move, to get internships. And I had the luxury of going to be an intern for then Mayor Sean Dunphy in Northampton, who at the time was the youngest mayor in the Commonwealth. And he was a superb mentor. Um, you couldn't have had it better. And he gave me projects uh, from solid waste management um, and then tasked me, go help the planning board. They had no staff. Um, and towards the end of the internship, which lasted a couple of years, he actually had me work with him to create an ordinance to create the first city planning position for the city of Northampton. And certainly that city has uh, benefited from that enormously. There's so much, as you said, the, uh, the planning commission's involved with. As you look back over those 40 years, uh, do you have some highlights and major accomplishments that you're, and that the agency is most proud of? What would you list as uh, major accomplishments over these uh, past four decades? You have a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, thinking back, one of the first ones that was an opportunity was the legislature created enabling legislation to allow outside of Boston regional transit authorities. So the very th first thing I got to work on with a colleague was the creation of the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, mm. which today is a robust system, um, struggles with financial issues, but carries 11 million plus people per year. Um, Connecticut River was labeled uh, the best landscape sewer in the country by the New York Times back in the day. And we have for 25 years been spending our time cleaning up the river. And now we have Class B water above the Holyoke Dam. That means it's fishable and swimmable. 
we still have the challenge below the Holyoke Dam because you have the older urban center. Um, but there's a numerous number of community development projects out in the rural towns that have rehabilitated housing units, have put in infrastructure, um, and so the list just goes on and on and on. And those projects, that's a good point, those projects certainly go far beyond the major cities. They do hit the rural towns and, and communities as well, so it's an all-encompassing, really, uh, a mission for the agency. Yeah, the region has 43 cities and towns. Um, each of those communities I've always thought of as having their own personality. Mm -hmm. um, and they go from the gritty urban core, the Springfield, Holyoke, Chickabees, to the classic suburbs, and then the much smaller, tiny towns. And I think what we're all proud about at the Planning Commission, they all matter to us. It's not size. It's not their complexity. It's that they all have needs and opportunities, and if we can work with them and help them, that's what we prove ourselves and our worth, and we trade that, I think, for them than buying into working together, to helping each other out um, and doing projects. What we're seeing increasingly is because in the small rural towns, there's so many problems. Um, a new aspect of our work is to try to get communities to actually start delivering services together rather than individually um, because they're struggling so hard uh, with things like population loss and fiscal uh, distress. So we have communities that are working on joint accounting projects, joint animal control. The newest one is maybe looking at a joint police department out of a couple of our rural towns. So. You, you also have been a, a strong advocate over the years of improving rail service uh, in and around the region and through the region. Um, as you look back at those, uh, at that progress, are you happy with the way things have progressed? And we're still talking, obviously, about east-west rail at, at this point, but uh, your thoughts on how far improving rail service has come and how far we've got to go yet? Well, I count that as one of my greatest and exciting projects, um, and we have accomplished a great deal north-south, um, and that has only become more and more strong as time has gone on. Um, again, thanks to Congress and leadership like then Congressman Olver and Neil, we landed stimulus money and were able to rebuild the north-south rail line from Springfield to the Vermont border, and that has really turned out to be a great success, and hopefully this summer um, we'll see added service north of Springfield. And of course, Connecticut has brought commuter service up to Springfield. East-West, um, I wish that we were on to implementation rather than planning, um, but the state was not convinced to go forward on the first study that was finished back in 2016. And so with, again, the state legislature and a lot of advocacy from the Western Mass delegation. A new study has just gotten underway, um, and I'm hopeful um, there's certainly a huge amount of support for it, in, it throughout Western Mass um, that will come to a favorable conclusion about a year from now, and then we'll move from planning to doing. As uh, you pass the baton on to your successor, uh, uh, what are the projects that uh, you feel will be high on the priority list as far as you're concerned to continue here in the Pioneer Valley with regard to regional planning? There's one um, above all else. Um, it's the challenge of the century, and that's climate change. Um, if you've read, as I have, the last two reports that come out about this subject matter, um, they've gone from problem to crisis to urgent crisis. Um, and I think planners are supposed to be all about cooperating with the future. I think we have a special obligation in our profession to figure out what can we do here in the valley to make that problem get under control. It's all about, in the jargon, bringing down greenhouse gas emissions. A huge amount of that comes from transportation. So it's getting people out of their vehicles, single occupancy automobiles, into things like public transportation, the rail projects we're talking about. Another project that we launched just a year ago, which is starting to have great success, is the bike share program up and down the valley. We just added East Hampton to the original set of communities. So 
I see that as all-encompassing, a uh, huge challenge, um, and has tremendous consequences from a people point of view, and a comedy point of view, um, and a quality of life point of view. You have brought a tremendous amount of passion to your work. That's obvious in the way you speak and, and what you've done. As you leave the job in September, what will you miss most? Well, I think I'll miss a day that I can go to work with a tremendous staff of women and men um, who are all pulling in the right direction, getting things done. That isn't to say we don't have successes or we don't run into obstacles, um, but we really pride ourselves. My mantra, and I think a lot of my colleagues share it, is we plan, we do, and then we measure what we do. Um, and so I'm going to miss being right in the middle of all of that. Um, having said that, I've had a career that uh, you could only wish for, um, and um, I will miss it, but uh, there are plenty of things out there for me to do in a volunteer capacity. Probably not right away. I think there'll be a pause, but um, there's m many, many things that I could work on and help with, but in a different capacity and leave, as I say, passing the baton on. I think we have one of the best planning commissions in Massachusetts, if not on the East Coast, and I'm only hopeful that that continues over the long term. Tim, um, any more thoughts on what you might be doing in retirement? You say you may be doing some volunteer work once the dust settles, so to speak. Uh, but as you look further down the road, uh, what are some of the, uh, the plans you have for retirement? And uh, you know, what's your bucket list, so to speak, when you do retire? Well, I learned how to fly a number of years ago. And so I think next I'd like to learn how to sail. Uh, which I think goes more with retirement, kind of. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to keep active. And last but not least, to make sure I keep active, I want to try to get a dog, uh, which is something I always wanted to do. But with this kind of job, I could just never see my way clear to do it.